Uh, we continue with the uh, second presentation given by uh, Fung Dura uh, from Observatoire de la Côte d'Azur in France. Uh, satellite illumination for pointing and auto tracking at grass station. Hello everyone, um, thank Clemence Wen and the organizer for allowing, allowing me uh, to present our first results uh, on satellite illumination experiment at grass station. Uh, so in my presentation, first I will present uh, the purposes and the setup of our experiment, then some filter to optimize the centros or spot detection. And finally, uh, I will present some first results with uh, the conclusions. So some words about um, our optical RAL station. RAL station is part of IORS network. It's located in the hinterland of RAS, French, at altitude of 1,200 meters. And the station is beyond 1.5 meter telescope. Has been designed in the 1970 for little laser ranging. And since 2008, the station has been upgraded in order to participate to various laser applications like SLR, time transfer by laser link, satellite laser communications and quantum communications and high resolution imaging. So experiment purpose of satellite illumination, you know the SLR chains uh, are using uh, high laser rays with high speed photo detector and two color technique. Usually a high speed photo detector or two color detector has a small size. And at RAS station, we use a 1.5 meter telescope. So when combining with a small size detector, we will have a very small or limited field of view on the detector. So to test, to test the new detector and during the satellite pass, we need to have a good pointing and final checking of the telescope. And especially when the satellite is not visible, we, we will have a larger error pointing, and by consequence, it will appear some discontinuity, no homogeneity in the ranging data, some errors in the timing detection, and some difficulty to activate the autonomous operations. So for that reason, we would like to use a hyperbola laser to eliminate the, the satellite, and the satellite become visible, and we can activate the final checking on the satellite in order to maintain the returning signal from the satellite in the center of the small detector. So before entering to the high power laser, I would like to describe our final tracking system that's you, um, a chip chain micro and, and a high speed camera. That is combined with a code checking of the 1.5 meter telescope. You can see here, and here we, we have installed two test band on the last meter of the telescope, the final checking bands with the chip chain micro and the high speed camera. And here is the test band for the other detector test. And during the auto checking, the final checking discharge is correction by cost checking when the corrections across the chip chain saturation limit. And in, a, in order to validate the combination between fine and cost checking, we have a performance test on a satellite visible by the sun with illumination up to 69 degrees. You can see here the elevation. And uh, with um, the orbital prediction errors of about 100 arc seconds estimated from the cost checking correction. And you can see here, this is a five striking correction by the chip chain micro. And the short and fast correction appear here relate to the discharge process of the final checking when its correction, of course, its saturation limit. And when we zoom on the um, spot position of the satellite in the center of the camera, we you can see that the, during the whole satellite pass, uh, the spot uh, position is maintained in the center of the camera with uh, MS of 0.5 arc seconds. Yes, the uh, corresponding histogram. So uh, the final checking works well when the satellite is visible. 
And when it's not visible, we use a high power laser to illuminate it. And here we use a 30 watt continuous laser from man light at 106 uh, micro with a light wire, with a light wire of uh, 3 nanometer. And the laser is connect, connected to a transmitter. It's a 200 um, millimeter telescope attached to the 1.5 meter telescope you can see here. And for the final checking, we use a high fist camera from a uh, Fertilize Serret 2 with a high resolution and it can work with a frame rate up to 400 frame per second. And the chip in my row from PI with a dynamic range of 10 milliradian and thus allow us to have 50 seconds of correction with very small jitter. Okay, so uh, we have estimated uh, the link budget um, for these experiments um, by using a uh, continuous laser, 30 watt, beam divisions, 20 arc seconds, and of course using uh, link budget equations. For Stella, Azizai, and Lagios, and you can see here um, when the laser is on, the spot of Stella and as I said, it were visible because of the it link book, uh, the, the link book is 100 times better than Lazarus case. And for Lazarus, uh, uh, at 60 degree elevation and at 10x, we expect to have a 400 photon per pixel. It seems to be good to you know, ratio to achieve uh, the spot detection and, achieve, uh, and activate uh, the final tra tracking. However, you can see here, this is the spot of Lazarus satellite when the laser is on. We, we, we can see the spot, however, we have a, an issue with the diffusion from the high power laser. And these diffusions can block the spot detections. And to be able to activate the fine checking, we need to apply some filter for the laser case. And here to optimize the spot detection, we need to correct hot and dead pixel of the camera, the offset noise of the camera also, and the most important is the diffusion from the high power laser. And its size and position can change the following the elevation of the telescope. And you can see here its size and its intensity change from low elevation to high elevation and return to low elevation. And here you can see the intensity is much uh, higher than the spot from La Lazios. So to optimize um, the spot detection, we need to use the cooling and the dark suppression uh, of the camera. And to correct hot and dead pixels uh, of the camera, we use a built-in tool of uh, first line where we can customize the uh, best pixel table and download it to the camera and the camera uses uh, viewing software to correct it in order to avoid the latency for this correction. And for the remaining hot pixel, when we use a very long ex uh, exposure time, we can use a, a median filter, a very simple median filter. And the most important is to suppress the diffusion from the hyper laser. We use a box blue or low path filter in order to recalculate the procedural dark of the frame sent by the camera. And after re re removing the procedural dark, you can, um, in order to suppress the diffusion, you can see here the spot from the satellite, as from Lazio's satellite, it well visible. And here is the spot of Lazarus uh, illuminated by our high power laser. So here we are able to, up, uh, able to, to activate our final checking uh, system on Lazarus illuminated by our high power laser. And we have a performance of test on a laser, la Lazarus uh, pass with a accumulation up to 75 degree elevation. And the final checking has been activated um, during this green period here. And at the beginning, we have uh, some issue because of some cloud at this elevation. And here you can see that the, 
during the final checking, uh, the chip in my row has uh, corrected um, up about 20 X seconds following these two axes, and the correction include uh, the telescope jitter, the telescope error pointing, orbital prediction error, also aberration velocity of the uh, plasios, and the first order of the, first order of the atmospheric turbulence. And when we zoom on the spot positions uh, in the center of the camera, we can see that du during uh, Lazio's path, the spot position has been maintained in the center of the camera with an RMS of 0 0.6 arc seconds. And during 20 minutes here, equivalent to 50% of Lazio's shaking time. So, uh, some conclusion here with um, our high power laser, we are able to achieve the final checking on Aziza uh, Stella and Lazio, um, Lazio during night time. However, for Lazio uh, during night time, uh, it's not as possible because uh, of uh, the sat saturation from uh, sky background. And we can use a narrower laser at 1.5 micrometer with a narrower filter to uh, improve this situation. And um, theoretically, we can model the um, satellite ve velocity and the misalignment between the transmitter and the receiver in order to optimize the signal level for other detection. And uh, in the future, we would like to integrate our final checking um, system into actual SLR schema in order to estimate the improvement um, on SLR measurement performance, of course, uh, with the uh, final checking activated on satellite illuminated by the sun or by a high power laser. And concerning to our optimization process to fit the the deficiency of the high power laser. This process can be applied for other camera to find the diffusion from different sources, uh, like cloud, dome, telescope during daylight, and it can improve one or two star magnitudes on star detection during daylight. And to avoid the latency, uh, the, the, the latency from the new mechanical filter, the, the blue filter, we can replace um, the numerical filter by a physical filter uh, by using a ultra high pass um, filter or small pin in 4F uh, spatial filtering system. We have uh, performed some uh, si simulation for our case uh, by using a pin block, and it might be a good solution for that. If I have uh, 30 seconds, okay. Uh, some word about the prospective application. Uh, so maybe our experiment here, this is the first step for the new methods uh, of uh, Doppler orbitography uh, proposed by this much here uh, in 2020, where the author used a modulated laser to illuminate a satellite and um, they uh, measure the frequency shift between the returning laser and the transmitting laser. And this is a promising technique with a high performance. However, the most significant obstacle for this technique is a very poor link bug risk during a long distance route to space transmissions. And to be able to perform some demonstration for this, uh, for this um, technique, I think fiber coupling and amplification of the returning signal may be un um, inevitable. So the, f the final checking is also inevitable also. And in the near future, we will use uh, our 1.5 uh, micrometer laser high power uh, with uh, some low frequency modulation to perform the first step um, of detection and with a fiber coupling uh, of the returning signal to see the modulation on the returning signal. So it's uh, on my slide, and thank you so much for your attention.
Okay, that was a bit more than 30 seconds on the last slide, so short round of questions. Nobody. Uh, just one question for understanding. So you're applying a fine pointing correction because the large telescope has difficulties to do this fine pointing. Do I get that right? Uh, for, for, for us, we use a 1.5 meter telescope. So we to, to test some small uh, detector, we, we need to use a fine... Okay. Um, ah, in combination with the small detector yes. size. Okay. Yes. Because the, the field will be very, it's very small. Can you adjust the divergency of this very strong CW laser that you're shooting on those targets? Uh, so, sorry, I didn't the Do you have an adjustment of the divergency for this CW laser that you shoot at the targets? Ah, the, the di the, you mean the divergence of our laser? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, we have a performance test at 20 seconds because we, we have estimated the own error pointing uh, uh, orbital collision errors. So mm. The sum is about uh, 10, 10 uh, arcsecond uh, mm. amplitude. So we, we, we use uh, 20 arcsecond. And, and uh, when, when the final checking is activated in the satellite, uh, on, on the satellite, we, 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 we can, we can, um, the, uh, we can optimize uh, the beam divisions to increase. Uh, Okay, that was the question. So it, it is adjustable. Okay. It is adjustable. Yes. Ah, okay. All right. Thank you.